Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss on pairwise alignment. So, in the earlier classes, we dealt with the different types of sequences, right, for the micro biological macromolecules. What are the different uh, databases we use to obtain the sequences? For example, for the DNA sequences, EMBL, GenBank, and DDBJ, right, DNA Data Bank of Japan. For the case of protein sequences, PAR and Uniprovert, right. So, if you have the sequences from different organisms, how far they are similar, how far they are different. So, with the sequences whether they resemble each other and for any particular function. In this case, we need to compare the sequences and you have to align properly and you can then you can see the similarities and differences. For this case, okay, there are various techniques to compare the sequences and we will discuss the details in this lecture. So, let us just refresh ourselves regarding the contents we discussed in the previous class. So, what did we discuss in the last class? Protein primary structure. What is the primary structure? Linear sequence of the protein, right? So, here the main chain is the same and the side chain is different, right? So, if you see, you can see N guys 2, C alpha, C, N, C alpha, C O H, right? So, here you have the hydrogen and the R group. So, main chain is the same, the repetition, right, with the elimination of water molecule, and here you have the side chain R1, R2. So, there are 20 different types of amino acid residues, right, you can form any chains, right, based on this R1 and R2. Then we discussed that nature selects particular specific combination of amino acid residues to form a functional protein. Then we discussed where shall we get the information. So, there are several proteins which contain the sequences, currently more than 70 million sequences are known, right, where shall we get the information. So, initially we started to collect manually and publish a book called Atlas of Protein Sequences, right. So, then they developed this into the protein information resource called PIR in Georgetown University. In the meantime, the Munich Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, right, they also try to collect the sequences, right, for example, the Swiss Prot and both the places they developed several tools to analyze the sequences. Later on, they formed a consortium. Right, they made the uniprot. There is now universal, universally accepted at the protein sequence database. Then what are the various features of uniprot? What are the why the uh, major aspects of uniprot? A high level of annotation, minimum redundancy, and large high, high integration with other databases. Right. So it has various features in uniprot. So they classify in three different groups. The first part you can see is general information regarding the sequence, regarding the structure and the function and general information regarding a particular protein. And second part, we give the sequence information and structure information and interaction information along with the links to other databases, right. And the last part, they mentioned about the enzymes and pathways and so on. They have high level of integration as well as the links with all the other databases in the literature. And how to obtain the data for mini -prot? For example, if you want to obtain the data for transcription factors, how to get the data? Go to Uniprot, search option, you use transcription factors, then you will get a list of sequences. If you want to remove redundancy, you can also do the redundancy, but there are only few options available in Uniprot. What are the various options available in the Uniprot? 90 percent, 50 percent and 100 percent, right, you get all the sequences, right, 90 percent and 50 percent. So, if you want 50 percent, you select 50 percent and you can download the data, right, then you can do different analysis. Then if you are interested on any specific protein, then you give that particular protein, so you get the information regarding that particular protein. For example, last class we discussed about hemoglobin. So, we got the sequence, we got the function, you got the post transfer modification sites and the binding sites, all the information you can get uh, from any protein. Now, we discuss about the alignment. What do you think about alignment? Yeah, so you can see how the evolution is related, right? They evolved for very, very period of time. So, if you have one sequence, 
and we have another sequence right you can see the one sequence here and we have another sequence how they are related with each other how like take how long it took to get different types of sequences if you take the sequence 1 and sequence 2 you can see some differences the here there is no difference here there is no difference and you can see a difference here and then you can see the relationship between two different sequences to understand how they are similar how are the different functions whether they are affected by any functions and so on so here you give two examples okay first one is the human hemoglobin and the second one is chicken hemoglobin so we look into these two sequences can you see any difference or similarities between the two sequences okay here this is similar and you can see some places right w g k v n v right so here you can see right so when you look at your eyes you can see some cases but we require an algorithm right to quantitate how far these two sequences are similar to each other which part of the sequences are similar which part of the sequences are different right so here again you can see k y h is the same but again here this is different so in this case there are various methods available to compare these two sequences right this is called the pairwise comparison the simplest one is dot plot right this will compare these two sequences and if the sequence are the same then we put a dot I will explain in a, a, a couple of minutes right and then from this plot we can see whether the same residue is located at the same place or there any shift like this is one uh, residue shift in the first sequence or any shift in the second sequence that they will see. So, this plot will give some information regarding you can see some repeats if you go any, any region which is the same in between the two sequences and you can see any long insertions or the deletions for example, the shift in the first sequence or the shift in the second sequence and also you can see some portion of the sequence which can be aligned together from for the different sequences. This is the first one. Then the second one we can do local alignments. Here you can see the, instead of the whole sequences you can do it for some small portions whether any small portions we can have the alignment between these two sequences. Then we do a global alignment. Global alignment will give you the whole alignment for the complete set of sequence. For example, if you see here you can align for the whole sequence or you can align only some specific portions of the sequence. How to align the sequences, how to score the sequences that we will discuss in, in a couple of uh, classes. So, what is the dot plot? What information you can get from dot plot? It is the one of the simplest methods because we have the sequence A and sequence B. So, compare these two sequences and make a dot if they are similar to each other and you can get the, the similarity plot between the two sequences how to do it. So, I will give you the one sequence here the second sequence right. So, take the compare the sequences take sequence 1 and sequence 2 right here this is the x axis and here is the y axis this is amino acid sequence here put the amino acid sequence. So, if you have two sequences, I will write it clear. So, for example, I put the sequence here. Right. So, I put another sequence here. So, this is sequence 1, this is sequence 2. So, you can make a plot. Right. So, do it here A I K T L V A A T A V right go the y axis. So, here is second sequence A I K L V A A I T A right. So, in this A here. So, where are the A's present in the y axis? Here we have A. So, then over here we have A, here we have A, here we have A. So, in this is I, where are the I's? Here and here on I, right? Then K. So, K is here, that is all. Then T, okay, here you have T here, right? Here, ah, here that is another one. Then L. 
one L is here, no other L's, right? Then V, where is V? V is here. Okay, then A, A again here. There is one A here, another A here, another A here. Right? Then this A, the same here, 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 here. Then T, here, this A, here, here, here. Here. Then V, one V is here, only one, right. So, if you see this one, so if you see these are the cases you can see the continuous dots. So, if you put the line here, this continuous and here this is a sound shift and then you can see continuous line here, right. So, this will tell you if it is the diagonal, then what can we infer from this diagonal ones? Yeah. So, we these three are diagonal, A, K, same. So, here you can see this is the same, right. The position is the same. Okay. Now, second one, if you see, look at here, here this is a shift. So, you can see a shift between sequence 1 and the sequence 2. So, you can see, you can still see here LV A, A here. You can see the same one here with a shift of 1 residue. So, if you have the sequences, it is difficult to see where are the residues which are exactly matched and where they have a shift. But if you make a dot plot, so like this is the dot plot, easily you can locate the, the residues where they matches and where they have the shift either in the first sequence or in the second sequence. So, here there is a shift in the first sequence because it is shifted here, right. So, you can say down. So, likewise if you in the next another sequence, you can have a shift at the above the diagonal. Right, you can see from this one you can see where you have the shift in the first sequence or the second sequence. So, what is the application of this dot plot? So, we can find the alignment and also we can see the, if there is any shift from the alignment. Right, you can easily see if you make a plot immediately you can see that whether there is an uh, exact match either at the diagonal or at the any of the uh, up, up the diagonal or the down the diagonal. So, here this is how to construct the dot plots. First dots are placed in the space of each position where the sequence elements are identical and then it will give you the identity between the two sequences right and the diagonals of this dot plot. So, this year we exactly looked at the same one then we can also use a different window size you can use different window size and you can use some threshold. For example, if you take the window size of 5. So, take this 5 come by this 5 and among the 5 how many of them are matching. So, then you put a threshold for example, 3 3. So, you have 3 matching 1 2 3 then you can say okay, there is a match then go to the next 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 window this 5 then whether put the threshold of 3 if it matches or not if it matches put a dot then then you can get different types of plot if there is a one sequence difference then it will consider that specific difference because they make the window window average right either you can 3 or 4 you can put right so you can get a plot right with a smooth plot with respect to the two sequences sequence 1 and sequence 2 with a single mutation right here we don't find the difference but we make a real dot plot with the same sequ sequence, then you can see a difference. Even the mutation, you can see a difference, right? That's a difference. Okay. So this is a protein data. So here x axis is the amino acid sequence, y x amino acid sequence, right? Here we have about 150 amino acid residues, right? So you can see some regions which are similar, right? This is this one, right? We have the sequence. So if you see the, there are uh, some re regions which are same. First few residues are same. Then again some residues are same. So, you can see the regions where you have the long stretch of residues that is around 100 residues. In the sequence, if you have the 100 residues, uh, you can see the difference of the uh, many uh, residues, they have the closely related with each other. So, now we can for any proteins, you can make a plot, right, and you can analyze why are the regions, why are they are uh, similar to each other between any two sequences. So, then what is simple alignment? The simple alignment that I discussed earlier, just say that sequence 1 and you have a sequence 2. Right, just how far they are aligned with each other. That means, or say how about the match between the characters in each sequence. So, I'll show if you have different sequences. For different sequence, for example, you put two sequences. And you put another sequence here.
for example, if you have this one a i t v s a and a i t a a. So, you can make these two sequences align with each other with a different aspects one that is a repl uh, replacement of characters for example, if you see here. So, this here valine is changed to alanine and this type of uh, changes is called mutation or substitution. So, if you change or replace one amino acid by another amino acid and that is called mutation. There are two other aspects one is called the insertion here we add more data more sequences right for example, if there is a i t if you add any of the uh, amino acid in between from anywhere for example, we add, add s then this will become a i s t this is called the addition. So, first one is the mutation mutation refers to the change of amino acids right for example, if there is a, a and this is, uh, this is change to v or it is a v or change to a this is mutation insertion that adds one residue right in, a, in any sequence. Then there is another called deletion in this case some residues are deleted in the sequence for example, if there is a sequence a i s t and this i is deleted then we get the sequence a i s t right here this is this i is deleted. So, these are the three kinds of changes in the sequences either you have mutation or you have the insertion or you have the deletion. Then if you look into these sequences the insertion deletions they occur less frequently than mutations. If you see different sets of sequences from the same organisms you frequently see the mutations changing one amino acid by another amino acid right. So, but less possibility of insertion deletions, but the insertion deletions we can represent by gaps right, but this is not frequent. So, this will influence with the high penalty when you make a sequence alignment ok. Now, I show uh, two examples first this is the sequence 1 here sequence 2. So, how far these two sequences are related with each other. So, first as we discussed we can have dot plot easily we can see. So, we can get the construct dot plot and you can see where we are uh, you can have the same amino acids or in insertion deletions. Then we need a numeric system to evaluate how far these two sequences align with each other they align well or this is a good alignment or a bad alignment. So, we need a score in this case we need to develop some of these matrices to score whether sequence 1 is related with the sequence 2 or not. So, in this case we need the scoring me uh, measures. So, we need three different types of measures we need right because we uh, discussed about three different types of changes. What are three different types of changes mutation insertion and deletion right. So, insertion and deletions we represent the gap. So, we give the gap penalty for the mutations right we need to give the penalty depending upon the types of mutations. Then some cases will have the same residue there is no change. So, that will be rewarded. So, because that maintains the same residue. So, the two sequences are similar to each other. Mm -hmm.